Welcome to Engage, where learning through play is the name of the game. We're here at Clockwork Couture in Burbank, where the Steampunk Science Fair fundraiser to support Seekers Unlimited's development of EduLARP programs is in full swing. But what the heck is EduLARPing? EduLARPing is a shortened term for educational live action role playing. How is that different from like a theatrical approach or like taking over a class and saying, okay, we're just gonna act something out for a moment to, to look at a math concept or English language arts. In a lot of live action role playing, there's a structure to it and there's a form and there's a purpose. And what we're doing is basically wedding standard core curriculums for whatever subject it may be, math, science, history, uh, language, and turn it into a narrative. And the reason why kids want to learn, the, the motivation for learning the, the core concepts is to solve the mystery. With a context, it makes things much stronger for learning. People remember the story, and if they're remembering the story very well, that will help them remember the, the science or the math or whatever the lesson is behind it. It's not abstracted. It's within a story and a narrative and a game that's totally thrilling. Tell us about Star Seekers. Star Seekers was about six weeks, and it had uh, the kids um, pretend that they were on a spaceship. And to make the spaceship go, they had to do various math and science functions. This week, you have to rescue this ship. And to do so, they had to use the math and the science in the different groups they had. And they would rotate the groups as well, like every 15 minutes. So everybody got a chance to do everything. The problems were differentiated based on their learning level. It was a cooperative game where they're working together. Some of the students were giving instant feedback to other students. So they got a very quick feedback to know if they did something wrong as well as other students were there to help students that perhaps were missing the concept or something. So the students were teaching each other. Star Seekers is a game that we ran for a group of sixth graders. In Star Seekers, we took the class and we divided them up into sections of parts of a spaceship. And we used that story of them traveling together in a spaceship on a mission. If the spaceship needs to avoid asteroids in an asteroid field, then it might be the job of one group to figure out how to do that. We could present them with a science challenge or a, math, a set of math problems, complete these set of equations and, and solve for these fractions in order to avoid the asteroids. That's the kind of dynamic that we want, an environment that's interactive, an environment that is changing and so you have to respond to it and if you don't respond to it it continues to change without you you've got right. to catch up to it so it's dynamic yes when we started when we first showed up we were as nervous as they were you know i can imagine they were like polite and like okay let's see what you got kind of like uh, contained and restrained or yeah. like mm, okay i don't know what's going on here but by the end they earnestly said to us as we were leaving why didn't you do this at the beginning of the year? Their biggest complaint and criticism to us was, where were you guys? Help the whatever, the Spandora, the Spandora guys so we don't have to die. Yes, Sidney, you have to do it. Why do you have to? I'll do it. Sixth graders need some structure. They can't have a completely free form um, environment, not because they can't handle it intellectually, but because it actually can't handle it socially. Because hmm. um, right, somebody might want be tempted to like step out of character and be like fool around or something. A, I've learned a lot by playing with those kids. They're really sharp and they're really concerned with their social world. I mean, more than anything else. Hmm. For them, the really important thing is who's friends with who. And how will our friendship work in the context of this game? And Yes. Right. Do I get to play with my friends? So that leads me to think of what the role of the teacher is in this kind of uh, activity. Um, would they be playing themselves, or would they be playing like the captain of the ship? The teacher was a facilitator. We present the material like, okay, you need to solve these problems in order to move forward onto the next part of the story. And if they're having trouble, we might help them, or if multiple kids need help, the teacher will help them help the kids. So there's an engineering chief and a science chief and a, a star district chief that was also a bridge chief. And that was the captain. Okay. Now it would change. So every, everybody got a chance to be in charge. Oh, sure. That was one of those things that's required. If you're going to, you know, have a scenario for uh, sixth graders, it's got to be fair. Mm -hmm. And if one person, only one person gets to be in charge, that's not fair. True. For the last three years, I've been running a lab called Starship Valkyrie. It's sort of a crisis simulator. 
and the ship as a whole is presented a challenge or a crisis, and the captain gives orders, and you storm onto the bridge and say, Captain, that won't work, or the starfighters launch, and they have to fight the enemy, uh, and then they come back, and they're hurt, and have to go to the medical section, and get patched up. Um, so that sort of dynamic, everybody working together for problem solving and crisis resolution, that was a whole milieu that Aaron looked at because he was one of my participants. And he looked at one of these props and he goes, what if this had a math problem on it? And in order to fire the lasers, I had to solve that math problem. For Hit Seekers, uh, we were asked by Morgan Jock, who's a high school math teacher, to come into his class. He was at a underserved high school here in Los Angeles. Uh, a lot of the kids were far, far below their uh, grade level in, in all aspects of math. And it was near the end of the year, and we were to come in and develop a program that essentially got them enthused about math, some confidence in math that they were using that they didn't have before. And so we noticed that a lot of these high school kids were listening to music. They'd have headphones on, they were interested in music. And so we worked on an idea that they got to play record executives and they played with money and they were uh, signing artists to, la to their labels that they created. So it was basically a business math accounting course, but using a lot of mathematical concepts that was unfamiliar to them. They just sort of learned the lesson, but now it was attached to money, which they were very interested in. And they had a reason for it. They were competing, in this case, the groups were competing to, uh, to make the most money as they could. So they had to balance budgets, they had to do projections and things like that. So it was a little more competitive, at least within the, within the groups. Uh, to get the money. We have prizes for them at the end and things like that. So it worked really well. There was a driving force to kind of get used to map and see how it can be used in a very practical context. Hit Seekers involved the students becoming executives, hired artists and producers, and got studio time. So each one of those three components had different effects on the success of the album. We deal with record producers like and then you deal how to do with money. It's not like you can just make an album just like that. You need a, you need a producer, you need a studio. It's kind of difficult, but it like it helps me like in the real life. We're young. We're looking to expand, and for next semester, uh, we'll be doing an entire semester run, but for one class for science. So every time they have science class, it will be an educational alert narrative that continues for a semester. So we started small and we're slowly growing bigger and longer and things like that. Ultimately, uh, I would love to get to a point where we have an all LARP based school and all the curriculum is uh, educational LARP based constantly every week. They're doing this in Denmark and it's really successful. I'm hoping to bring that here in America. Are you looking to collaborate with that school in any way? Or? Yeah, it's called Osterskov After School. I've met with the headmaster and their teachers. We're working with them to get curriculum, and so we're definitely working together. They know about us, we know about them, and we are talking to each other. Mads now, the headmaster, is on our advisory council for Seekers Only. Well, I wish you the best. Thanks. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you. For more on Seekers Unlimited, head to seekersunlimited.com.